World War II ended in 1945, more than 70 years ago. Younger generations today may know little of its history, the suffering, global trauma, and the loss of scores of millions of lives. To many at the time, the devastating conflict between nations appeared as if the end of the world was near. But the Allied nations prevailed against Nazi Germany and fascist Italy, and VE Day, Victory in Europe Day, was proclaimed on May 8, 1945. The war in the Pacific continued with Japan's military forces striving to control more and more territory. United States President Harry Truman approved the dramatic strategy to shorten the war with the newly invented weapon of mass destruction. On August 6th and August 9th of 1945, the United States dropped the first ever atomic bombs on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan, killing more than 150,000. The nation of Japan surrendered unconditionally on September 2, 1945, ending World War II. In his victory broadcast from the USS Missouri battleship, General Douglas MacArthur summarized the historic lesson of war. General MacArthur repeated these words in his farewell address to Congress on April 19, 1951. Military alliances, balances of power, leagues of nations, all in turn fail, leaving the only path to be by way of the crucible of war. The utter destructiveness of, destructiveness of war now blots out this alternative. We have had our last chance. If we will not devise some greater and more equitable system, Armageddon will be at our door. Yes, our Armageddon will be at our door. Or as General MacArthur pronounced it, Armageddon will be at our door. Will we in this generation experience the end of the world? What does your Bible reveal about our future and World War III? Will you be prepared for Armageddon? You need to know the prophecies concerning the real Armageddon. Stay tuned. Warm greetings to all our friends around the world. Modern filmmaking produces dramatic, realistic disaster movies. Such movies warn us of cosmocide and of the end of the world. Perhaps you've seen one of them, such as Geostorm, Pandemic, The Day After Tomorrow, Deep Impact, Asteroid, San Andreas, or Armageddon. Such movies may help us understand the potential disasters we may face in the future. Millions of people have suffered in similar disasters and know the reality of such dangers. On the other hand, movies can desensitize many thinking the graphics technology and the catastrophic depictions are just movie manufactured. You've heard the expression, get real. The billions of humans who have suffered through oppression, wars and economic reversals and severe natural disasters know what is real. Your Bible predicts a very real Armageddon. What is Armageddon? And how will it affect the future of the world? And how will it affect your life? And what prophetic signs will lead up to Armageddon? We'll answer those questions on today's program, and we'll be offering a free revealing study guide titled, Armageddon and Beyond. Be sure to write down the contact information to order your free copy. Just what is Armageddon? The Holman Bible Dictionary defines it this way, quote, a Middle East site of the final battle between the forces of good and evil, end of quote. My friends, who will win the final battle between good and evil? Your Bible reveals the ultimate good news and the victory won by the soon coming Messiah, the prophesied Prince of Peace. We'll discuss some of those scriptures later in the program. But when will we and the world have to face Armageddon and World War III? Your Bible reveals the sequence of events leading up to Armageddon. The Messiah, Jesus Christ, revealed major prophetic signs leading up to the great climax and the end of this age. He also proclaimed a new age to come. We call it tomorrow's world. Jesus preached the gospel, the good news of a coming world-ruling government called the Kingdom of God. 
You can read about that in Mark 1, verses 14 and 15. Jesus answered His disciples' question concerning the end of the world or the end of this age. Matthew 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. And what signals the end of this sad world of failed human governments? Turn in your Bible to Revelation 11, verse 15. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever. Notice the response of the nations to the new world government announcement. Verse 18, The nations were angry. They will resist the newly announced divine world ruling kingdom. The end time superpower, the last revival of the Roman Empire, called the Beast in the book of Revelation, supported by ten worldly kings or kingdoms, will fight a feudal war against the coming King of Kings. Revelation 17 and verse 12. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. These are of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. These will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them. For He is Lord of lords and King of kings, and those who are with Him are called, chosen, and faithful. The carnal nations of planet Earth will be no match for the coming King of kings. But the armies of the world will gather in northern Israel at Megiddo before marching south to Jerusalem. Megiddo is located about 55 miles north of Jerusalem in Israel. In ancient times, it guarded the main trade route between Egypt and Damascus. It also overlooks the largest plain in Israel, the Valley of Jezreel, as it's called in the Bible, or the Plain of Esdralon. The kings of the east crossed westward across the Euphrates River. They meet up with other superpower armies at Megiddo. The book of Revelation describes this gathering as the sixth of the seven last plagues. They gather at the place called in Hebrew, Armageddon, then move southward to Jerusalem to fight Christ there. Notice Joel 3 and verse 1. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there. The Valley of Jehoshaphat is between the Mount of Olives and the city of Jerusalem. It's also known as the Kidron Valley, which extends southward for some distance. Yes, the battle of the great day of God Almighty will take place at Jerusalem. Jehoshaphat means judgment of the eternal. God will judge the nations in this climactic battle. My friends, will you be prepared for Armageddon? In the next part of the program, we'll show you how you can be ready. What are the prophetic signs and trends you need to know? This exciting free booklet, Armageddon and Beyond, will cover the sequence of prophetic events leading up to World War III and Armageddon, and it reveals the good news of life beyond Armageddon. Here in the center is a chart showing end-time prophetic milestones. They include the Great Tribulation, the Heavenly Signs, the Day of the Lord, and the Second Coming. You need this booklet. What happens at the prophesied event called the Seventh Trumpet? Listen to these subtitles in the booklet. The Seventh Trumpet, War Against Christ, God Will Save Doomed Mankind, Beyond Armageddon, and Your Personal Future. You need to understand the sequence of prophetic events. Bible prophecy reveals your future and the future of the world. Be sure to order your exciting free booklet, Armageddon and Beyond. You can also order this free booklet on our website at tomorrowsworld.org, or you can pick up the telephone right now and call the number on your screen. Just ask for the booklet on Armageddon. In the first part of our program, we saw the Bible prophecy that the kings of the earth, or the great military powers, will gather in northern Israel at Megiddo, or the plain of Ezralon. They are preparing for the battle of that great day of God Almighty, as it tells us in Revelation 16, verse 14. 
When will this happen? How will you know the sequence of prophetic events? My friends, you need to know the sequence of earth-shaking end-time events prophesied in your Bible. Let's first review three major events covering the prophesied three and one half years leading up to the return of Christ to this earth as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. If you have your Bible, turn to the book of Revelation or the Apocalypse. Turn to Revelation, the sixth chapter. The Apostle John, who wrote the book of Revelation under God's inspiration, sees in vision the famous four horsemen of the Apocalypse. They symbolize in order false Christs and false religion, war and its devastating effects, famines that normally follow on the heels of war, and pestilence and disease that follow after famine. The Apostle John writes in Revelation 6, verse 8, So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The world will suffer massive deaths of men, women, and children. The fifth seal, as you read in Revelation 6 and verse 9, reveals a martyrdom of Christians during the tribulation period of about two and one half years. Then we read about the sixth seal, which introduces the time of God's wrath and judgment on the nations. The sixth seal is referred to as the heavenly signs. Revelation 6, verse 12, I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. These heavenly signs, as they're called, introduce the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is a time of God's wrath and judgment on an unthankful, rebellious world. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, will be wrathful. He'll execute God's righteous judgments. The day of the Lord here in Revelation 6, verse 17, is called the great day of His wrath. The day of the Lord will bring God's judgments on the nations. Let's understand, there are three prophetic milestones leading up to Christ's return. They are, one, the great tribulation, two, the heavenly signs, and three, the day of the Lord. These three events cover a period of about three and one half years. Isaiah 34 verse 8 and Isaiah 63 verse 4 show that the day of the Lord in end time prophecy, the time preceding the second coming, is a period of one year. You might want to write down those references, Isaiah 34 8 and Isaiah 63 verse 4. As we saw earlier in the program, a revived superpower called the Beast in the book of Revelation will join the military might of other nations to fight against this invader from outer space, the returning Messiah, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. Revelation 17, verse 12. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with a beast. These are of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. These will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them, for He is Lord of lords and King of kings, and those who are with Him are called, chosen, and faithful. Yes, the Lamb of God, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, will overcome them with His army. His army will consist of the saints of God, true Christians who are resurrected to the seventh trumpet. His army will also consist of powerful angels, as it tells us in Matthew 25, verse 31. Revelation, the 19th chapter, describes this great heavenly army descending to the earthly battleground. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, he had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, 
followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Will you join the worldly empire that will dominate the world's economy and governments? Or will you choose to be on the side of the king who will rule the earth and bring it lasting peace? As we saw in Revelation 17, faithful Christians will follow Christ. Revelation 17, verse 14. And those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. What will happen to these worldly military superpowers that will fight the King of Kings when he comes back to earth with his army? We'll answer that question in the next part of our program. But first, I'd like to offer you this exciting free booklet titled Armageddon and Beyond. This free booklet will cover the sequence of prophetic events leading up to World War III and Armageddon. And it reveals the good news of life beyond Armageddon. Here in the center is a chart showing end time prophetic milestones. They include the Great Tribulation, the Heavenly Signs, the Day of the Lord, and the Second Coming. You need this booklet. What happens at the prophesied event called the Seventh Trumpet? Listen to these subtitles in the booklet. The Seventh Trumpet, War Against Christ, God Will Save Doomed Mankind, Beyond Armageddon, and Your Personal Future. You need to understand the sequence of prophetic events. Bible prophecy reveals your future and the future of the world. Be sure to order your exciting free booklet, Armageddon and Beyond. You can also order your free booklet on our website at tomorrowsworld.org. Or you can pick up the telephone right now and call the number on your screen. Just ask for the booklet on Armageddon. Nine nations around the world are known to have nuclear weapons. The combined power from these weapons could destroy all human life on Earth several times over. On page five of the Armageddon booklet, this chart shows the estimated number of nuclear warheads each possesses. They are Russia, the United States, France, China, the United Kingdom, Israel, India, Pakistan, and North Korea. Not only must the world face danger from nations with nuclear weapons, but other nations and terrorists are seeking weapons of mass destruction as well. A time of great danger, a coming World War III is ahead. Regular viewers of Tomorrow's World know that Bible prophecy reveals the future and the sequence of events leading up to Armageddon. The Apostle John, writing in the first century AD, describes what he saw in vision. Revelation 9, verse 17. And thus I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth blue, and sulfur yellow, and the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions. And out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three plagues a third of mankind was killed, by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which came out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails are like serpents, having heads, and with them they do harm. The Apostle John was seeing in vision 21st century modern warfare. He was describing weapons of mass destruction in first century language. My friends, the threat of nuclear war is still very real. The Bulletin of Atomic Scientists also warn of cosmic catastrophes. These scientists have set the symbolic doomsday clock to two minutes before midnight. The hour of midnight denotes ultimate doomsday, the end of human civilization. The Bulletin announced in January 2018, quote, to call the world nuclear situation dire is to understate the danger and its immediacy, end of quote. The Bulletin's president, Dr. Rachel Bronson, stated the following, quote, it is urgent that collectively we put in the work necessary to produce a 2019 clock statement that rewinds the doomsday clock, end of quote. The Armageddon prophesied in your Bible is very real, but the end time battle will feature the world's military might against the returning heavenly army led by the King of Kings, Jesus Christ. 
It is called the battle of that great day of God Almighty in Revelation 16, verse 14. And who will win that war? Revelation 19 gives us the answer. Revelation 19, verse 19. And I saw the beasts, the kings of the earth and their armies, gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone, and the rest were killed with a sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. Armageddon has been described as a final battle between good and evil. The commander of heaven's armies will win this war. And with this great victory, he will usher in the millennium, a thousand years of peace and prosperity for all nations. But how will you prepare for these awesome events just ahead of us? We'll answer that question in the conclusion of our program. But let me give you one more opportunity to request this vital free booklet, Armageddon and Beyond. You need this free booklet, and you need to know the future. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free copy of Armageddon and Beyond. You can also order your free booklet on our website at tomorrowsworld.org. The prophesied battle of Armageddon is real. The kings of the earth and their armies will gather in northern Israel to fight against the Messiah, Jesus Christ, at His coming. The king of kings will conquer these rebellious, oppressive nations. But how can you personally prepare for the challenging times ahead? Notice the admonition by the Lord Jesus Christ in Luke 21, verse 36. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Perhaps you've not been praying. Now is the time to get down on your knees and cry out to God for a change in your life. Isaiah 55, verses 6 and 7 tell you how to draw close to God. Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call upon Him while He is near. Let the wicked forsake His way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and He will have mercy on him, and to our God, for He will abundantly pardon. God promises to bless you and forgive you if you seek Him with your whole heart. The solution of the world's problem lies in the future change in human nature. General Douglas MacArthur realized the futility of war and pointed out the need for a spiritual solution. He stated, We have had our last chance. If we will not devise some greater and more equitable system, our Magadan will be at our door. The problem basically is theological and involves a spiritual recrudescent and improvement of human character that will synchronize with our almost matchless advances in science, art, literature, and all material and cultural developments of the past 2,000 years. It must be of the spirit if we are to save the flesh. Yes, it must be of the spirit if we are to save the flesh. Beyond Armageddon, the new world government comprised of Christ and the saints will teach the way to peace. Yes, during the millennium, there will be a spiritual recrudescence or renewal, an improvement of human character in the human spirit. The kingdom of God will rule over all nations for a thousand years. Pray for that kingdom to come. We look forward to the time beyond Armageddon when the prophecy of Zechariah 14, verse 9 will be fulfilled, and the Lord shall be king over all the earth. Yes, the Prince of Peace will govern the world's nations with love and justice, guaranteeing a world of prosperity and abundant living for all peoples. My friends, you need to prepare for Armageddon and the challenging times just ahead of us. Be sure to request your free copy of Armageddon and Beyond. We invite you to join us every week on Tomorrow's World or watch us online at any time. As our world continues to decline and self-destruct, you need the encouragement, faith, and truth that come from your Bible. 
Gerald Weston, Wallace Smith, and I, as well as our guest presenter, Rod McNair, will continue to share with you the inspiring teachings of Jesus Christ, the encouraging good news of the coming kingdom of God, and the exciting end-time prophecies and their meaning. So be sure to join us again next week, right here at this same time.